Hey, what's up everybody? Dr. Jared Vasquez here again. Welcome back to my channel. Let's talk MMA, let's talk boxing. And today, uh, unfortunately, we're doing another one of these videos. Um, it's the third video I do on a boxing death this year. It's actually the fourth death uh, in boxing this year. And we definitely have um, to talk about it. I'm gonna mention the names just out of respect here. Maxing Datachev, uh, Ugo Santillan, uh, Boris Tanchevkov, um, and Patrick Day. For this year, uh, whether we like it or not, uh, that list keeps growing. Um, we see a pattern and it's not getting any better. Uh, and if we are to enjoy from this fantastic sport and these great athletes moving forward, um, we definitely have to figure out what's wrong. We have to revise our protocols. Uh, as a ringside physician, I have to sit down and say, hey, what can we do better? Um, where did we fail? Where did we miss? What spots are open? Um, we need to brainstorm fans, reporters, of the sport, regulators of the sport, more than anything, medical staff, ringside physicians, uh, emergency uh, technical, emergency medicine um, staff, uh, supporting staff, EMS, you name it, we have to go over everything, over all the details, trainers, uh, we have to revise everything so we stop this from happening or we minimize it. Um, I myself was part of the medical team that worked on a great fight Daniel Twitch Franco uh, and um, David Harrow and I was a, one of the good outcomes so I myself was part of uh, diagnosing a brain bleed and transporting a patient quickly uh, that was the perfect storm uh, and um, we had we had a good outcome but uh, that hasn't been the same for all these fighters that I mentioned already we have to do something better. We have to change the amount uh, of the time maybe. Uh, we have to be able to recognize the earlier symptoms of a fighter uh, that's concussed. Uh, I think we are not gonna enjoy the sport less if we regulate more how, you know, the amount of damage a fighter can take you know, uh, going back in, in memory to last weekend and Gifford's fight in UFC Tampa, a fight that was severely concussed and, and was allowed to continue to fight uh, by the staff. These little things we have to take into consideration. Uh, the death of Patrick Day comes uh, from a brain bleed, of course. I'm gonna put the links down there. I made two great videos uh, with uh, Maxine Datashev and uh, Hugo Santillan death, which explain exactly what happened. Uh, be, be sure to check those videos out if you want to learn kind of the anatomy and the medicine behind um, why these deaths happen Physi physiologically and anatomically. There's, check those videos out. But I'm making this video to, to really open the doors uh, into a more serious conversation by regulators we need to change something. It could be the time, the, the amount of uh, rounds, uh, the time in each round, um, have stop fights quicker with less knockouts. Um, could be regulating training. It could be anything. At this point, uh, I don't have the answers. Uh, I've been part of, of um, an emergencies like this uh, in the Dan Franco fight, of course. And uh, we need to figure out how to get more outcomes like that and less outcomes like the, the fighters that, um, that passed away in 2019. Um, I think it's gonna, it's until we do something, that list is gonna grow because athletes are only getting better at what they do. And um, it, uh, unfortunately, it's hurt each other and, and win the battle. So we need to learn how to make it safer for them. So. The comments are open, my DMs are open, I'm a ringside physician, I have uh, almost, you know, almost five years of experience, thousands of fights, 
Uh, so I'm willing to, to talk it out and uh, create a forum and uh, let's open the conversation and really tackle this. Um, I'll make follow-up videos to this one. This is just to start the conversation. Um, I'm also at Rockfin. I'm going to leave all my social media here in the description. Rest in peace to Patrick Day and let's, let's really start this conversation.